Hi, my name is not Petunia, you can call me Anna. This is my Prisoner of Azkaban ramble talk video. Basically, I wrote down in my phone just some of the things that I was thinking while reading Prisoner of Azkaban. Some of the main things that kind of stuck out to me, whether they were funny or just odd or for some other reason which will become clear when I read them out to you. So I wanted to share them with you so I decided to just put them all in a video together and here they are. So the first thing that I wrote down in my phone was basically a question in regards to accidental magic that happens outside of school, like for kids before they've actually gone to Hogwarts. For instance, when Harry, you know, blows up his aunt, that's accidental magic. My question is, does accidental magic not matter before they've started Hogwarts? Is it only when they're 11 that they get the trace put on them? Otherwise, why did Harry not get in trouble for talking parcel tongue to that snake and setting it free? Why is that never discussed? Why was he never in trouble for that? If the trace is like on a witch or wizard for their entire life until they're 17. What I was thinking is that it makes sense for the trace to only be put on a student once they've started school. So once they're 11, they get the trace put on them. So then it says, you know, if they're doing magic outside of school or not. But before that, they have no trace. So it's okay in a way for them to do magic. That's the only thing I can think of that makes sense as to why he wouldn't get in trouble in the past, but he does get in trouble in the books once he has started at Hogwarts. But like the other thing as well, I was thinking because they're told not to do magic outside of school or they'll get expelled. So if you're under 11 and you do magic outside of school, are they just going to say you can't go to Hogwarts? It's uncontrollable. So the next thing I wrote down in my phone was just something that I really wished would have been in the movie and this was when Ron was shouting into the telephone, the muggle phone, trying to talk to Harry but getting, you know, Uncle Vernon and Uncle Vernon just being like, what is going on? And Ron being like, can you hear me? That would have been an absolutely hilarious scene to have in the movie and I'm so sad that we missed it. The next thing I wrote down in my phone was just how much I love Fred and George being cheeky to Percy. They, they're treating him basically exactly like siblings behave. I have four siblings so yes I can say without a doubt that is exactly how siblings behave when they try and lock Percy in a pyramid. That's exactly what my siblings would do to me. It's realistic and I love it because I have siblings and so often stories will be like I have this brother but I hate him or I have this sister but she's evil. Siblings get on your nerves, but at least mine are really, really nice. They have their moments. But overall, I love my siblings, and I really love when in movies or, or stories, books, they have this portrayal that's kind of accurate to my situation, where you have the really, like, siblings getting on each other's nerves, but deep down you still love each other. My next question was, if all you have to do to open the Monster Book of Monsters is stroke the spine, why doesn't the shopkeeper do this? He acts like it's such a terrible thing, like getting the books out, but like, why don't you just strike the spine. Does it wear off after a while? I need answers. I need specifics. I want to know because if it wears off after a while I understand it probably wouldn't matter that much but I mean if you're handing books out to students I think you need them to be docile and why don't you tell them by the way when you have this at school you'll need to stroke the spine so that you can open it without getting your hand bitten. That would be helpful to know. I really 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 hate the Dursleys. I hate them. They m okay mm. I just get so mad when thinking about the Dursleys because they are literally just child abusers. They abuse Harry and they just... I have this question. If they wanted to stamp out every magical bit of him and just raise him as a normal child, as they say often, they're like, we thought we could raise him to be normal. How about you don't bully him and abuse him and lock him under the stairs? How about you treat him like a normal child? If it was me, okay, if I was a horrible person who hated magic and I had like this prejudice and I really despise people who are magic, and I had my sister's son left on my doorstep, I would raise him to hate magic the way I do. Can you imagine what the series would be like if Harry got his acceptance letter and he was like, whoa, ew, magic, no, that's bad, and he didn't want to go to Hogwarts? I'm having so many thoughts right now. Yeah. Oh wow, I'm just thinking about that now. Okay, the other thing I had, kind of similar to like a what would the series be like if. So imagine if Sirius, at the beginning of the book in Prisoner of Azkaban, Sirius checks on Harry. He just wants to get a glimpse of him before he goes off to get Peter Pettigrew, right? So imagine if instead of just getting a glimpse and then going on his way, Sirius actually came and said hello to Harry and introduced himself. Can you imagine what would happen if he was just like, hey, I'm Sirius Black, I'm your godfather, I knew your father, you look just like him, you have your mother's eyes. 
Harry's like, whoa, he's telling the truth. And then he just like explains everything, the whole situation, and he's like, by the way, this guy Ron from Hogwarts, he has Peter Pettigrew as an animagus, as a rat. Harry's like, that's my best friend. They could sort things out so quickly. But I mean, obviously the book would be so short, it would kind of be pointless. But still, I liked the idea. I was When I was reading the book, I was like, hmm, this could be interesting. <laughs> when they're on the Hogwarts Express and the Dementors come by, there is like this tiny mention where Ginny is shivering at the back because of the Dementors. I just feel like I need to emphasize this and I want to point it out because Ginny is still struggling with what happened last year with the Chamber of Secrets when she, you know, had Voldemort possessing her. This is a big deal and I just wish that Harry wouldn't forget and I just wish that, I don't know, I just feel like there's so much more potential for Harry and Ginny's story and like romance to be just so much stronger than it was. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I love the way it was in the books but I just feel like there was so much more potential as well like if he'd noticed and he'd been like, you know, hey, are you okay? I don't know, I just have so many emotions. Also, I feel the need to point out how much Draco Malfoy loves doing impressions of other people. He does an impression of Harry in this book, Fainting, and in the book I'm reading at the moment, Order of the Phoenix, he does an impression of Ron dropping the quaffle. I don't think you understand just how much of a drama king this kid is. He's such a drama king. He wants all the attention. He loves to make people laugh. I think that if there was like a drama institution, which there is actually, it's called the Wizarding Academy of Dramatic Arts? Something like that. Basically, I think if there was no Wizarding War, if there was no Voldemort, I think Draco would have grown up to join the theater and just would have been like an actor. He's dramatic. He would be like, oh, he would be into melodrama. I just have to say, I want to see this side of Draco more often. And I think it's so sad as well. Sorry, this is not in Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm just kind of ranting out the whole books now. But I think it's really sad as well that Draco grows up to be someone who is controlled by Voldemort and he feels like he doesn't have a choice with his life. His dramatic flair in the younger years is slowly snuffed out until he's just this quiet, sad, tense child of 16. He's not a nice guy, but I, I love his character. The next thing I wrote down in my phone is another one that I wish would have been in the movie and this is Sir Cadogan, the knight, who ends up taking the place for the fat lady once she's been attacked by Sirius Black. He is just so much fun that I think it would have been so great to see him in the movie and now that I think about it, it kind of feels like they took out everything funny from the books just to make the movie one big dark movie. Did that make sense? <laughs> from around movie three everyone was like they're getting darker now and I'm like yeah but the book still was really funny. They just took out the humor from the book and made the movie one big train wreck. Okay the next thing that I wrote in my phone is one of my favorite things ever and every time I read this in the book it just makes me laugh. It's probably not something that you would be expecting. So get ready for this. After Sirius Black has attacked the fat lady and everyone's brought in to the Great Hall, all the houses because they're searching the castle, there's so many students since they're all four houses there that I kind of imagine them to be not just like in the front entrance way but like all through the tables they're kind of all standing around some of them might be sitting whatever but basically there's lots of students in the Great Hall so you can't just stand right at the front near the doors you have to move further back. So they they're all in the Great Hall Dumbledore's talking to them and then Dumbledore sends the tables against the walls so that there's room for sleeping bags for them to sleep. But every time I read this, I just imagine Dumbledore flicking his wand, the tables flatten the students to get to the walls, and some of the students are screaming, duck! And it's just complete pandemonium. Dumbledore, why? You could have told them to get out of the way first. The next thing I wrote down, I hope a lot of you will be able to relate. When Harry gets the Marauder's Map and he finds one of the entrances to Hogsmeade, it takes him an hour to walk to Hogsmeade an hour. If that was me, I would be giving up halfway. Not even halfway. I'd give up after 10 minutes. I'd be like, well, I'll see you guys back in the common room because my legs are too tired right now and I could be using my time to chill with a book. I mean, sure, I love books, so any excuse to read a book. And maybe Harry wouldn't like reading a book, but I'm just saying, if it was me, I'd be like, no thanks, bye, have fun in Hogsmeade, I'll see you when you get back. I've written down Harry roasting Malfoy on page 274. So hold on while I find that because I can't remember what that was. Ha! Huh. Okay, so this is when they're talking about Quidditch. Draco says, sure you can manage that broom, Potter? And Harry's like, yeah, I reckon so. Got plenty of special features, hasn't it? Said Malfoy, eyes glittering maliciously. Shame it doesn't come with a parachute in case you get too near a Dementor. Pity you can't attach an extra arm to yours, Malfoy, said Harry. Then it could catch the snitch for you. Oh! Draco, do you need some ice for that burn? I also just have to mention, Neville is so much braver than me. If I was in half the situations that Neville finds himself in, I don't think I would be that brave. For instance, when McGonagall is like all stern and like who left the passwords lying around and Neville's just like, 
I can't believe he actually owns up to it, like in front of everyone. That is so brave. It's such a small thing, but it's so brave. Also, I just wanted to mention one of Harry's dream. He dreamt about Quidditch and somebody in the dream said, where were you? We had to use Neville instead. Ooh, what an interesting dream. Can you imagine the Harry Potter series without Harry? They'd have to use Neville instead. My second last point was why didn't they use Petrificus Totalis on Peter Pettigrew? They have to get him back up to the castle and their brightest idea is to chain him to two other people. Why didn't you just use Petrificus Totalis so he can't move or do anything? So many wizards forget about the simple spells like Expelliarmus, which came in really handy for Harry. The last thing I wanted to say is just that I am so sad about Sirius. He goes from having a really terrible family to having to spend 12 years in Azkaban for something he did not even do to getting out of Azkaban only to not even get his name cleared the entire time and then book five happens. So I hope you enjoyed this video where I really just rambled completely about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and some other stuff as well just related to Harry Potter thrown in. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you want to be notified of when I do make more in the future. And I'll see you next time. Ciao for now, monkeys!